Hey everybody, it is March 18th, 2020. Uh, welcome to a uh, third installment of the Mr. Mark's YouTube channel. Um, just a little tip I want to talk about today. Uh, welcome everyone back. Uh, pause. Pause is your friend. So if, in case I say something too fast, you can always hit pause and return and rewind it. So I will try to be brief. Anyway, I want to talk a little bit about Schoology. Um, it's kind of a pain getting started, I understand, uh, but it will also prep our uh, learners to be ready for middle school and high school. Um, I want to go over the online academic resources today. Um, that is a reference that we can use to keep your kids busy during this uh, different time. Um, also, I want to continue with Epic. I talk about Epic, how you can go and access books online. I'm going to do a little read aloud from that today. Um, going back to one of my favorite third grade books to read out loud, which is Ramona Quimby, Age 8. And that is available on Epic, and uh, I invite you all to read along with me. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and get started today. Um, I like to keep this under 15 minutes. So, um, accessing Schoology from home, just a little reminder that uh, you need to go to the Seattle Public Schools, seattleschools.org website, um, click the Students tab, select Schoology, follow along to the online academic resources. Um, remember, you have to also log in. Remember, the username is one, followed by um, your initials and last name, I believe and you must include at seattleschools.org as well and the password should be your birth date so let's go ahead and go to the website first here so let's go ahead and I'll bring that pull it up here um, here we are if you go to the students and if you scroll down to where it says academic online academic resources then you'll see scroll down slowly there's lots of different resources that you can use uh, culture grams is a great one to learn about different cultures all over the world I might do a separate video on that you have um, pebble go we've been using this a lot in school about looking up research about different uh, people um, then of course there's schoology and of course tumble books so tumble books are is another way you can go and get more reading so if i click on schoology and when i do that i'm already logged in so it'll come up as he pauses and waits i go to courses and there's homeroom right there i'm gonna click on our homeroom and here i have the quarantine remote learning links and here's my message to everybody out there um, if you scroll down to the reading links there's Raz kids you should be doing Raz kids but there's also epic uh, it now is I know it says it's under construction but I think I'm pretty much ready to pull that out so if you click on epic um, remember your school class code is KWL 2831 if you were to just highlight that copy and then click on epic you can paste it that code in there. Now I've already done it once, so I can just click there. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go and I'm gonna pretend that I'm Sally. Sally is my favorite phantom. So there's Sally. And then when you click on that, you'll see that Michael Mark sent you a book. That's me, Ramona Quimby, age eight. Check it out. So that's the book I'm going to be reading today. I'm going to do a little read aloud today. So this is Ramona Quimby, age eight, um, by one of my favorite authors of all time. Beverly clearly she is actually age 103 so she is still alive and um, um, yeah 103 years old and this is we're going to be age 8 and you can just click and notice that little arrow you can turn the page and it's just like a regular book um, this is a letter from Amy Poehler which is a favorite comedian of mine you might have known her from her work on Saturday Night Live this is her um, pretending that she's a, a, a little kid. Can I go walk this is Amy Poehler right here. The wrong way up the escalator. No. Rick, can I pretend like I'm gonna fall in the fountain? No. Rick, can I go to Spencer's Gifts and get you a mug that says number one stepdad on it, and then on the back of it it says Rick, 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 Rick. That's uh, Amy Poehler. She's an actress and comedian. She's written a lot of books, and she 
wrote the introduction to Ramona Quimby, age eight. And I'm going to go ahead and read that in just a moment here, but I wanted to go back and mention that during our read aloud today, your learning target is, your job is to read a fictional text and ask and answer questions using the text as support to show your understanding. That is a common core standard for third grade. So the mentor text I'll be using today is Ramona, age eight by Beverly Clearly, who is actually age 103. So let's go ahead and then afterwards, oops, afterwards, if you were to click on the link right here down below, you can go ahead and click on, go to the chat room and let me know what you think of Epic and Ramona, age eight. It'd be nice to see some people there. I have not seen anybody yet. Hopefully you're accessing Schoology and you can communicate and we can, we can, uh, we can get through this learning together anyway. Without further ado, let's go to Ramona Quimby, age eight. And I'll start by reading the letter from the from Amy Poehler. Great books connect us to a bigger world. Great characters ring true and resonate long after we have finished reading. Ramona Quimby is that kind of character, a boisterous bell that continues to ring for children and adults everywhere. Ramona Quimby is a young girl with a keen sense of justice. She is fer feverish and frustrated, driven by a passion that can only come from a kid who is in a hurry to grow up. She does not suffer fools. She is full of vim and vigor. She is a very tiny warrior, a whirling dervish, and a funny five-alarm fire. Author Beverly clearly gave us Ramona, and Beezus, and Henry Huggins, one of my favorites, and good old Ribsy. But it was always Ramona that kept me coming back. Beverly clearly knew the secret to any classic children's book. Never forget what it feels like to be young. She understood how frustrating it could be to argue with your sister, or how exciting it could be to have your whole day stretching out in front of you. In today's world, where people are always searching for strong female characters, Mrs. Clearly was ahead of her time. Ramona was a pest. She was irresatiable and uncompromising. Ooh, that's an interesting word there. And sometimes what's cool about this, if I'm not sure what a word means, I can click on it and look. Irascible. Irascible. And Irascible. Means having a hot temper and easily angered. So if I go back and read, read that again, Mrs. Clearly was ahead of her time. Ramona was a pest. She was irascible. She had a hot temper and uncompromising. She was allowed to be angry and not afraid to stand up to the boys. Ramona and Beezus had a complicated sisterly relationship that we can all relate to. Dorothy Quimby was a weary and warm working mother who tried to run interference. The Quimby family felt like they are our own, and Beverly clearly created a world on Clickitat Street that felt exactly like our lives in any town, USA. Which brings us to Ramona Quimby, age eight. In the sixth book in Beverly Clearly's fantastic Ramona series, we find our little heroine navigating the treacherous waters of third grade, which many of you could probably make connections with. Whether she is on the school bus or in the classroom or playing the silly baby games that Willa Jean forces her to play, Ramona remains a funny and fierce little girl. And attention kids, Ramona cracks an egg over her head and somebody steals her eraser. And she wants to sit quietly and read, just like you. All she wants to do is sit quietly and read, just like you. It's a privilege all these years to help introduce Ramona Quimby, age eight, to a new group of readers. And I'm grateful to be able to thank Beverly Clearly personally. Like Ramona, I grew up with a mother who encouraged me to be myself. I also share Ramona's love of reading. When I was eight years old, I wrote a letter to Beverly Clearly declaring my love for her books. She wrote me back. That letter has lived in a rainbow colored scrapbook in my childhood bedroom until right now. I've always thought I wanted to write a letter to Beverly Clearly myself. And well, she's still alive, so maybe I can. And then there's uh, the letter that Mrs. Clearly wrote back to her. Thank you, Ramona Clearly. I'm sorry. Thank you, Beverly Clearly. Rock on, Ramona Quimby. Signed, Amy Poehler. First day of school. Chapter one, the first day of school. Ramona Quimby hoped her parents would forget to give her a little talking to. She did not want anything to spoil this exciting day. Ha ha, I get to ride on the school bus all by myself, Ramona bragged to her big sister Beatrice at, be her big sister Beatrice at breakfast. Her stomach felt quivery with excitement at the day ahead. 
a day that would begin with a bus ride just the right length to make her feel a long way from home, but not long enough, she hoped, to make her feel carsick. Ramona was going to ride the bus because changes had been made in the schools in the Quimby's part of the city during the summer. Glenwood, the girls' old school, had become an intermediate school, which meant Ramona had to go to Cedarhurst Primary School. Ha ha yourself, Beezus was too excited to be annoyed with her little sister. Today I start high school. Junior high school, corrected Ramona, who was not going to let her sister get away with acting older than she really was. Rosemont Junior High School is not the same as high school. Besides, you have to walk. Ramona reached the age of demanding accuracy from everyone, even herself. Reminds me of some third graders I know. All summer, whenever a grown-up asked what grade she was in, she felt as if she were fibbing when she answered third, because she had not actually started the third grade. Still, she could not say that she was in second grade since she had not finished what that grade la last June. Grown-ups did not understand that summers were free from grades. Ha ha to both of you, said Mr. Quimby, as he carried his breakfast dishes into the kitchen. You're not the only ones going to school today. Yesterday had been his last day working at the checkout counter of the ShopRite Market. Today he was returning to college to become what he called a real live school teacher. He was also going to work one day a week in the frozen food warehouse of the chain of ShopRite Markets to help the family squeak by, as the grown-ups put it, until he finished his schooling. Ha ha to all of you, don't hurry up, said Mrs. Quimby, as she swished suds in the dishpan. She stood back from the sink so she, could not, she would not spatter the white uniform she wore at the doctor's office where she worked as a receptionist. Daddy, will you have to do homework? Ramona wiped off her milk mustache and gathered up her dishes. That's right, Mr. Quimby flicked a dish towel at Ramona as she passed him. She giggled and dodged, happy because he was happy. Never again would he stand all day at a cash register, ringing up groceries for a long line of people who were always in a hurry. Ramona slid her plate into the dishwasher. And will Mother have to sign her progress reports? Mrs. Quimby laughed. I hope so. Beezus was the last to bring her dishes into the kitchen. Daddy, what do you have to, why do you have to, what do you have to study to learn, what do you have to study to learn to be a teacher? She asked. Ramona had been wondering the same thing. Her father knew how to read and do arithmetic. He also knew about Oregon pioneers and about two pints making one quart. Mrs. Quimby wiped a plate and stacked it in the cupboard. I'm taking an art class because I want to teach art. And I'll study, study child development. Ramona interrupted. What's child development? How kids grow, answered her father. Why does anyone have to go to school to study a thing like that? Wondered Ramona. All her life she had been told that the way to grow up was to eat good food, usually food she did not like, and get plenty of sleep, usually when she had more interesting things to do than go to bed. And I think that's where I'm going to stop today, um, because we're I can only go 15 minutes at a time, and we're running in a little more time. So what I'm thinking is, um, readers, I think what we'll do is I'll go ahead and post these read-alouds as a separate uh, link on YouTube, and... Um, Maybe I'll just do one chapter at a time and record those and see how it goes. Um, other than that, I'd like to thank everyone for stopping by today. Um, there we go. So thank you for uh, visiting. Just remember, you can go to Epic by going getepic.com slash students. Our class code is KW, no, QWL2831. Just click on your name and you can start reading. And you can even click the book that uh, I just shared with you today. So I'd like to thank everyone for coming by. Um, and uh, see you tomorrow.